Hello and welcome to this video, which is part of a series based on content from the new chess book, Chess for Life, written by me, Jim Matthew Sadler, and Women's International Master Natasha Reagan for Gambit Books. Um, one of the chapters in the book is all about Capablanca, um, and uh, that was uh, all based on, uh, on a lot of work that I did on Capablanca's games, in which I uh, looked through loads and loads of his games and pulled out lots of uh, typical themes. The idea of that was to uh, well, give me sort of blueprints for, uh, for my own play. I could think of Capablanca's ideas and try and apply them in my own games. Um, now, in the book, we uh, talk about five of the most important themes, the most interesting themes. But, um, but actually, I, um, I found about 25 or 30 themes when I was, uh, when I was looking, and uh, I, uh, I don't even think I got them all. So I thought it might be interesting just uh, in a few videos just to, uh, to show a number of the other themes that, that didn't make it into the book. I think one of the themes that Capablanca is most famous for is, uh, is uh, the theme of shutting out the opponent's bishop. Uh, there's been a, a number of, he played a number of very famous games with, uh, with this theme. And I just wanted to, to show a couple just to give you the idea. Uh, what does Capablanca do? The idea is that his whole game almost seems to be about rendering one piece absolutely useless. And uh, once that's achieved, um, the rest of the game is all about, uh, well, uh, uh, getting to grips with the rest of, uh, of the opponent's position and uh, exploiting the fact that, um, that he's basically missing one piece. Uh, this is the game against uh, Bogolubov. It's, um, I mean, it's actually uh, you know, a very, very complicated position. And uh, even after blocking out the bishop, it uh, was uh, incredibly complicated. But the, uh, the whole idea that uh, the Count Blanc had was, uh, was quite extraordinary. So he went uh, in this position. Uh, he noticed that the bishop on h5 was looking uh, just a little bit out of the way. And he went f4. And after queen e7, he went g4. And after bishop g6, he went f5, bishop h7. Now, as, as you can imagine, uh, um, it's going to take black quite a long while to get his bishop back into play. You're looking at f6, king, G, king f8, bishop g8, bishop f7, bishop e8, bishop d7 before it's uh, kind of doing anything at all. So, um, uh, well, what Capablanca uh, tried to do was to, in the rest of the game, was to... Uh, was to get his um, um, start actually exchanging off pieces and get a knight onto d4, which is an absolutely gorgeous square. And uh, in the end, he won a very famous game. I mean, it was incredibly complicated. It was a, a very sharp position. But that initial concept of blocking out the bishop is, um, is absolutely lovely. Um, maybe his most famous game on this theme is uh, a game against uh, the English player, William Winter. Um, yeah, in those years, 1919, 1920, the... Uh, the English players were well, mostly cannon fodder at uh, at, uh, at world level. Um, that only changed uh, much, much later. Um, but this is a, a, a quite a extraordinary game from uh, from Capablanca. In his position, I mean, uh, he's got the two bishops. I mean, he's looking perfectly fine. But uh, there's nothing uh, amazing, you might think. But Capablanca came up with the idea of playing bishop g4, and after h3, he just swapped off the uh, the queens. And just when you start uh, looking at this position, you suddenly realise that uh, although it doesn't look so bad for, uh, for white, there's one incredibly uh, awful thing about it, and that's that the bishop on g3, the bishop on g3 just is not ever going to get free. It's just hemmed in by uh, the wall of black pawns and also by its own pawn. That pawn on f2 stops the bishop from ever getting active. So that bishop on g3 is going to be looking at the pawn on e5 for the rest of its life. And what uh, Capablanca then did was, uh, well, that uh, bishop's uh, out of the way. So we started playing on the other side, trying to open up lines uh, in order to, um, uh, well, in order to exploit the, uh, uh, the basically, uh, the fact that white's playing with, uh, with one piece less to the maximum. Now, Kasparov uh, analysed his position very deeply and found a, um, a quite incredible way of maybe establishing a fortress for, uh, for white. Um, but, well, I think in a practical game, it was uh, always going to be uh, unlikely that, uh, that anyone was going to find this. And in the end, uh, well, in the end, actually very quickly, Capablanca just, uh, just won. And uh, in this position, uh, Winter resigned. He's uh, pawned down, that A pawn is running all the way, and that bishop on g3 is still not, not going to do anything at all. Um, there's also... Um, 
another game, this uh, much less well known this one, but uh, it just uh, whilst I was looking at the theme, just uh, this one occurred to me. It was played against uh, John Morrison uh, at uh, New York, 1918, and uh, in this position, uh, well, there's, there's uh, quite a bit happening really. Kings have castled on uh, on the opposite side. Um, uh, White, you know, looking to set up some sort of attacking formation. But obviously Capablanca, you know, sort of uh, noticed that uh, that bishop on g3 and thought, oh, I know what to do with a bishop on g3. And he exploited the fact that uh, the knight on d5 is uh, not properly protected and played f5. And after h4, he went f4. And uh, once again, White uh, ended up with uh, um, a bishop, uh, just uh, uh, a dark squared bishop on the king's side, blocked in, unable to take part. And uh, uh, and well, this uh, this proved uh, pretty fatal to his uh, to his chances later on in the game. So uh, just um, quite a well-known theme from uh, from Capablanca there, and uh, not one that I put in the book, but one that uh, definitely gave me a lot of pleasure when I uh, when I saw it again. And uh, you know, I hope that it's uh, uh, useful for you, and that uh, you can also apply this in your own games, shutting out the opponent's pieces, and then playing on the other side and uh, exploiting the fact that uh, you're basically playing with uh, with a piece up.